morning everybody and welcome to our video i must admit i've got a confession to make and that is that i forgot to set the publish button for clive's video on uh, monday so you actually got clive last night so if you're just switching on today and it's wednesday you've got clive and then me so i'm sorry about that i'm sorry if you miss monday but you've got double today last week we were looking out of a window. This week, I'm going to invite you to look in a cupboard, but not a real cupboard. I'd like you to sit back, get your feet up, close your eyes, and just use your imagination as I read these words to you. And hopefully, they will be very helpful. So I hope you sat back. Have you got your feet up? Good. Think of a cupboard. It's in the corner of your house and you've not opened it for ages. Picture it. The paintwork is old and the handle is dusty. And you stand facing it, trying to remember what's behind the door. You're not quite sure. Is it books from the past, old files or old clothes? Things left over from childhood, glass jars or rolls of wallpaper kept safe in a place but never really going to be needed. Because you cannot quite remember and because there is time, you stretch out and touch the handle and you open the door. The smell of mustiness meets you instantly that's the smell you expected but the sight what you see is quite different the shelves are neatly stacked they're stacked with cardboard boxes and they're the size of shoe boxes and they're all attractive colors scarlet orange apple lilac bronze such attractive boxes and each one has a white label and some have writing on them others not you look at the labels and read the words printed on some of them major disappointments says one broken promises another lost loves unresolved conflicts nagging doubts biggest failures there are more yet as you move your eyes along. Anger, no encouragement, no thanks, unanswered prayers and secret wishes. Perhaps there are 30 boxes in all and perhaps 20 or 25 have names on white labels. Some labels are blank. You see resting on the shelf a black marker and you wonder, you wonder, should you use it? Then you decide to write some other categories on the blank labels. What will you write? What words will ring bells about who has failed you in your life? What fear you have? all those people that annoy you so you write a personal hit list chief regret awkward people awkward people at chapel or what else do you write you stand back and look at the boxes, at the labels you noticed earlier. Major disappointments, broken promises, lost loves, unresolved conflicts, nagging doubts, anger, no encouragement, no thanks, secret wishes. And the labels which you wrote yourself. You look at them and sense a weird attractiveness in it all. Maybe these boxes could be of some use. Maybe letters could be filed in them. Maybe slips of paper or names even. You lift one of the boxes, a scarlet one, and it's empty and it's light. 
you reckon you could perhaps take eight or nine boxes in your arms. So you choose which ones you'll take. And you look again at the labels facing you and you choose the ones you want to take. You pile them in your arms, the labels facing you. They come up to your chin and even a bit above. You balance the boxes and with your foot, you shut the cupboard. And just as you're thinking about where to put your new discoveries, the doorbell goes. Who could it be? You're not expecting anybody. So you go to the window and you look outside. Three houses along, there are charity collectors and they're collecting money for charity, or that's what it looks like. But you can't see your door. The doorbell rings again. You go to another window, you peer around the boxes and see on the other side of the street, a little girl crossing the road and she's running fast. And you see her trip and down she goes and the tears start and you want to help her but you're holding these boxes and there's someone knocking at the door you begin to panic where will you put them all they're getting heavier now awkward to carry you can't return them to the cupboard because you've shut it you can't put them in the hall or in the sitting room. What would anyone think if they saw these titles? Those titles which attracted you earlier. And the doorbell rings again. And you feel you've just got to answer it. It might be important. So you make your way to the door. And you're fumbling and watching your feet in case you stumble. As you get to it, the bell rings again, and almost in desperation, you say, it's open. The handle turns, and the door swings towards you. But who is standing there, you can't see, because the boxes are between you and the stranger. And just as you feel you're going to panic, a warm, reassuring voice says, I've come to take your boxes away. Then two hands touch yours and relieve you of your burden. And you see going away from you the things you were so keen to clutch not so long ago. You watch them move away from you, the attractive boxes with the curious, attractive titles the disappointments, the letdowns, the personal hit list, the poor me's, the woe is me, the chief regrets that you've almost come to cherish. You don't see the face of the stranger, the one who's relieved you of that load. You only see the back. You stare as the stranger walks down the street and into the distance. You keep staring and staring until you can stare no longer. But something is pulling at your leg. You look down and there on the doorstep is the little girl with the grazed knee. You can help her now because your hands are free. Let's pray. Father, help us to give you the stuff that burdens us, the stuff that we want to keep hold of, the stuff that we've got hidden away. Help us to be free in you. And in you alone, we pray. Amen. Amen. Take care, everybody, and God bless.